Raymond just launched three new watches based on their in-house manufactured ENG series movements. You may have seen their online launch event back on October 13th. I've just had the opportunity to review these on my wrist and I'll give you my thoughts on this episode of Adventures with Time. I've been monitoring the Braemont watch brand for several years now and have attended two of their open house events in New York City where I was able to pick up a few trinkets. I've always listened in on any online event they hold, including their recent launch of three new watch collections that make use of their new ENG 300 series movements. So, when I was in New York City a couple of weeks ago, I decided to stop by the Braemont Boutique to see if they had any of these new models for me to try on. And they did. Let's see what I think about them. The Supernova is, I think, a new look for Braemont. Most of their watches have had a strong aviation theme and look to them. This new collection has a more refined look. Using their new multi-part case design, which they call a triptych case, the bezel is separate from the case body, yet mimics its shape. From the top, there is a lot of case to view. And with the brushed and polished case finishing, there are a lot of surfaces to reflect light and dazzle from this watch especially from the integrated bracelet with its complex link shapes. Unfortunately, there is no micro adjustment on this bracelet. Only 40 millimeters wide and 11.1 millimeters thick, this case does have a 53 millimeter length, which might be too large for many wrists. However, it does feel comfortable and appropriate on my 7 and 7 8 inch wrist. This is an interesting case design. From the side, we see a fairly flat and elongated looking profile due to the lugs which span the entire width of the case end into the integrated bracelet. The dials on all three color models are the same except for the indices. The midnight blue I tried on uses rectangular hour markers where the pitch black and albus white have Roman numerals. I really like the date indicator that uses two wheels to express the date, something we've seen on other high-end watches such as the Glasuta Original CQ Panorama date. And of course, Braemont wanted to include a display case back to show off their new ENG 375 movement, which runs at 25,500 beats per hour and has a 65-hour power reserve. They've also employed many modern movement technologies to ensure this watch meets Braemont's H1 timing standard, which is compatible with the ISO 3159 chronometer specifications. Oh yeah, if you desire so, you can take this watch into the water as it has a screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance. Price for the Supernova is 7,995 British pounds. Currently, according to the brand staff at the New York City boutique, these watches are made to order. What that means is you'll have to wait a few weeks once you order yours for it to come from the UK. I also tried on the new Fury collection. I find this collection to have the character of a field watch, even though it is named after aircraft from the 1930s and World War II. It's a three-handed watch with two tracks, one with minute or second intervals and another divided into quarter minutes. It has plain Arabic hour indices and a date window at three o'clock. As with the Supernova, they've included a power reserve indicator in a sub-dial at six o'clock. Both the black and blue dial models come in a 40 millimeter wide case that is 12.9 millimeter thick with a 49 millimeter lug to lug and a 20 millimeter lug width. The Fury also has a screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance. This watch is priced at 5,995 British pounds and is also made to order. The third collection Braemont launched is the Audley, available in both stainless steel at 5,995 British pounds and rose gold at 14,995 pounds. Although in a similar case to the Fury, the Audley is classified as a dress watch. Like the Fury, it is a 40 millimeter wide case with a lug to lug of 49 millimeters and a thickness of 12.9 millimeters with a lug width of 20 millimeters. Although the Audley has polished applied indices and hands against a silver sunray dial with a simple minute track on the rehot. 
I'm very impressed by Bremont's growth into an in-house watch manufacturer. They have built a modern design and manufacturing facility in an attempt to bring back watchmaking to England. They must have invested a great sum of money to get to this point. In fact, they mentioned their large investment in many places in their marketing material. Although I love what they're attempting to do, I must say I haven't seen a watch model which sufficiently draws my interest to spend the money it takes to own a Braemont watch, including these new H1 generation watches. I'm really torn between wanting to be a part of this journey by owning a Braemont watch and not seeing something I think is worth it to me. But that's just my point of view. Others may differ. How do you feel about Braemont? Have you been enticed by any of their watches? By the way, the H in the H1 designation is for John Harrison, who won the Longitude Prize for creating the first clock that could reliably tell time to calculate longitude at sea. H1 generation is a designation given to any watch made with the ENG 300 series movements and tested to Braemont's H1 standards. You can learn more about the Longitude Prize and creation of chronographs in this video where I present a history of advancements in telling time. I also suggest this video here where I review and consider several luxury watches. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.